What's up guys? This is just a really quick update. Um, I haven't gotten a whole lot done because I'm waiting on some switches and it took me a while to get the curve started. But it's going to be a left-handed curve turnout there. So it'll be a three-track main line from there for about 32 feet the whole way up through the curve. It'll go underneath the curve there. This will all be hidden. That under there will be hidden. It'll be elevated to one inch back there. It'll continue to elevate. And at this point right here, it'll be elevated two inches off the home and three and a half, three and a half inches off the plywood. That's at one inch every, it's about one inch every four feet, one inch up for every four feet long. And then here it'll be one inch for every three and a half feet to make it a little steeper to get up a little higher quicker. So that'll be at three inches off the home of soap. And this will be uh, four inches of the home of soap. Or it'll be four inches off the home of soap. I got to put in a little banana piece here to get the horseshoe to be just that, a horseshoe. Um, back there, it'll be five inches elevated, which is just enough to get the track underneath and have clearance. This is going to be the park. I'm going to cut this triangle off here, so it'll be a trapezoid here. And I think that'll look nice. There's a little bit of a height difference from the curve and the park. Right about there, it'll be elevated six inches. And then this is where it goes back to an inch every three and a half feet. Because from here to here is an inch every four feet like I've been doing, but this side of the curve gets steeper. So this will be one inch every three and a half feet, and I'll go from six inches elevated up to nine inches up around the corner. And I've been building these for supports to hold the uh, curve up back here for the risers, well, for, you know, to hold it up six inches here and five inches there, and so I can get the track underneath through it. The track underneath will come out right about here. There'll be a tunnel portal around here. Uh, there'll be a mountain through here so that I can kind of see the trains coming up the opposite side of the curve, but at the same time, the focus, I want it, I want the focus to be on the curve, so this is going to be a little bit hidden, so you can't see the trains completely clean and clear. Um, we're supposed to get a foot to a foot and a half of snow this weekend, and I love snow. And I'll probably, probably be out plowing the driveway, so uh, I should get a lot done this weekend, because besides being out in the snow... There's nothing to do. Everything's going to be shut down, so I will be able to get a lot further on the curve. And I'm going to show you guys a diagram of how the curve is going to look. So this is a diagram of the curve. It's not, well, it's actually, it's a diagram of the whole layout. It's just uh, kind of shrunk in spots. So this is the Tyrone loop back, which is really over here on the layout. It goes around. This will be Altoona Yard. Go up through the curve. That's the cross and loop back with pit carn staging and the coal yard, the coal mine. So the way this is going to work, this outside main line is the one that connects into the Altoona yard is westbound. The inside one is eastbound. The middle one, a 32 foot long bi-directional main line. So what that enables me to do is let's say a, uh, coal train is leaving out of Altoona. Let's say mixed freight, heavy mixed freight. Since uh, the coal train is going to be empty when it comes out of Altoona going up the curve. But let's say a heavy mixed freight goes up the middle bi-directional track. So now a passenger train can now go on the outside main line, the westbound main line, and pass it. Which I think would be pretty neat. Same thing with a coal train up here. I could have a coal train um, a heavy coal train that needs to go down grade, it can take the bi-directional track while another train comes up and the passenger train passes it going on the inside loop. So that's kind of how the curve's going to work. I think it's going to be pretty neat. I'm going to have a 
signal bridge here and one back here. But uh, this will enable me to have a ton of action on Horseshoe Curve at all times, really, especially when I'm running this layout myself. You know, there's going to be, uh, the, with the two loopbacks, I'm just going to have the train run continuously, maybe probably two, so that I can do my own thing. I can take a mixed freight from Enola to Altoona and go up the bi-directional track while another train goes down, another train passes me going up, and then when I get here I can cut off the helpers and send the helpers back down the bi-directional track while you know another train comes up and another train goes down. So I can have three trains passing on the curve at once, which is really what I wanted to be able to do, and a two-track mainline to the curve just doesn't really look right. It doesn't look quite big enough so a three track mainline sh should work really well and especially with a local going up to Crescent and the coal mine being up here and staging up here and the helper units going back down there's going to be all sorts of uh, action going on on the curve which is and what I want to do that's the main part of the layout the whole layout's designed around the curve actually here's a here's a view of the whole layout. Ignore this. This was my original idea. But uh, the whole layout is designed around the curve, around the pit. Uh, Tyrone, Altoona Yard all along the front, and a coal mine. And that's basically it. So uh, Horseshoe Curve is going to be busy, and that's, that's the uh, reason. So with that said, that'll do it for this episode pretty much. I have... Uh, I gotta replace those number fours. Number four turnouts. I had number eights coming in the mail. They're not here today. Uh, they won't be here until next week. But I want to get this done. The road bed and main line fixed. And then uh, at some point, I'm gonna do an operations video on my yard and how I do my yard because it's it's an absolute blast. It's pretty much all I do. I mean, this is it's I. You know, you can see I have my car cards, and I have them, you know, ordered in track two and track five. There's in track two, track five. But it's 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 a total blast, and I'll try and come out with a video for you guys at some point on my yard operations. I just got to get a stand or something for my camera since my or for my phone since my camera kind of crapped the bed on me, but. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.